So excited to be here. This is actually my first craft day, so it's not only exciting to be back at an event post-pandemic, but specifically this one. Um, and I want to run you guys through our decentralization journey. You know, it's been a while, and, and we're here, and we're still continuing on. So where did we start? You all know the hosted service. Uh, you know, at its peak um, in bull market excitement, we were seeing almost 850 million queries per day. Really incredible. I still remember the time where we were celebrating 1 billion queries a month, and this was just when DeFi was getting started. But part of the hosted service, you know, we saw over 52,000 subgraphs deployed. So this is a new subgraph, maybe someone forking an existing subgraph, testing subgraphs. And this was done by over 35,000 developers. Really insane support in the community. And, and it just goes to show that, um, you know, the graph was built by thousands of people, not just the initial core team. Where we continued, so we launched the network in December 2020. Leading up to the network launch, we had a very exciting test net. Over 100 indexers, node operators were participating. We had a curator program that taught everyone what curation was, especially if you were non-technical, better understanding how you could get involved in the protocol. The GRT token launched, the council launched, and then the network launched, um, and here we are today. We also had the Edge and Node team launch. So originally, the Graph Protocol Inc. team, um, the initial team of the Graph, um, they're now a core developer. And part of the launch was actually forming the Graph Foundation as well to be the ecosystem steward uh, for the community to actually lead neutral items and components of the Graph ecosystem. So anything around governance, uh, grants, core developers, you name it. I want to take you through what the next step in our decentralization roadmap looks like. So, you know, we believe in expanding governance beyond what we have today on the council, continuing to grow the ecosystem and the network, uh, core contributors, so continuing to expand our core developers, bring on individuals around the world that want to build the protocol and make it a piece of their own, um, network migration, so continuing to support dApps that want to migrate their subgraphs to the network and really commit to decentralization themselves. Um, and then continuing to educate the masses, because really, you know, this is a small group, you know, even with up to 1,000 people here, um, but the impact of the graph, right, should be millions of people, um, and we really want to get there. So going through decentralized governance, I'll start with, um, you know, grants and ecosystem. So the Graph Council and the Graph Foundation, we oversee the community treasury, and I'm really excited to share that over $140 million worth of GRT um, in grants has been awarded in the past year and a half. Um, so give a round of applause to all those grantees, because that's incredible. And that includes core developers, grantees, audits, um, and other ecosystem expenses. Um, next on the council, so we have a council of 10 members. They represent five different cohorts. That's indexers, delegators, the initial team or core devs, research, and also users. Um, and you know, being director of the foundation, I get to work very closely with the council members, and it's truly an honor to see their diversity in expertise um, and being able to bring that to the table where you know, every proposal is very different, whether it's a grant or a protocol roadmap update, um, and getting that expertise from 10 different people has been really rewarding. I'll move on to GIPs. So GIPs are governance improvement, sorry, graph improvement proposals. They're part of the governance process for any technical upgrades. And we've had 32 already submitted or created in the community. And what's really exciting is it's not all core developers. So as the Ethereum research community you might have seen has a lot of individual contributors, um, we do as well. Um, and I would say you know, one of the highlights for me has been seeing things like subgraph transfer ownership um, pass. And, and what that is is really enabling anyone to transfer the ownership of a subgraph to another member who wants to maintain it long term. And why that's so important is because the vision of the graph and even decentralizing isn't one team maintaining the infrastructure. It's the longevity plan. So for example, a developer builds a subgraph, they don't want to maintain it, a DAO should maintain it. And the DAO should be able to transfer to other developers long term as well. Last, I'll focus on DAOs. So really excited to share that we have two DAOs in the Graph ecosystem, which we did not have last year. The first DAO is the Graph Advocates DAO. So this launched with the Advocates program in February, which was a program similar to an ambassador program, trying to get more people involved in the community so they could also have a piece of the Graph themselves. And what that blossomed into was a DAO. 
And so the Advocates DAO now manages the Advocates program, overseeing the onboarding, the pipeline of new members, and also community grants. So this is actually our first step as the foundation in delegating part of the grant responsibility to a DAO, to another governing community. We currently have four categories in grants, protocol, tooling, subgraphs, and community. And so the Advocates DAO will be taking on that community grants um, for the future. So far, we have 97 advocates and 39 Advocates DAO members. Really incredible, it's essentially a full-size team. And they're distributed around the world. So most predominantly is in the US, but actually Nigeria, Argentina, Ukraine, Uganda, and Germany are very close behind. So it really goes to show that we have a global community forming. And if you see below, these are the different kinds of roles you can take on in the Advocates community. So whether you're a figure skater, which we did have apply uh, to become a Web3 welcomer, you can do that and learn about Web3. Um, or if you want to be a subgraph expert and teach new subgraph developers and be a technical teacher, um, there's really space for anyone to get started. The second DAO is Subgraph DAO. And this was actually announced by the community this week, so really excited about that. And the first meeting will be kicked off at GraphHack, so I hope you can all make it there. But the goal of Subgraph DAO, very similar to Advocates DAO, is to take on the Subgraph Grants category. So anything from defining the requirements, um, the grant size, helping the, the teams actually match themselves. We'll often see a team come to us and say, hey, I want a subgraph, I need support, I don't have the resources, and I would love for you guys to help. And our goal is for the subgraph DAO to take that on. So anything around PMing, creating standards, um, providing the actual support for subgraph developers and migration, um, and also educating developers, because we believe that the pipeline of subgraph developers that every project needs um, is massive. And the number of developers that currently exist that can be a subgraph developer um, in production are very few. So we want the subgraph DAO to really um, own that process of bringing more subgraph developers to life. What this governance cycle creates is a self-sustaining ecosystem where people start off in the DAO, let's say Advocates DAO, and they want to learn more about Web3. They realize where they can learn or what they can contribute, how they can maybe provide value to the protocol, and then they apply for a grant. Um, and these often come from the idea of how, how do these people want to participate in the protocol easier. So some of our best grants are things like indexer tooling, making it easier for indexers to close their allocations, uh, or subgraph tooling to make it easier for subgraph developers to test out their schemas. Um, and really, we find that's a great progression to the network itself because the grants are also distributed in GRT. So the grantees get to use their GRT in the network, and often that leads to more grants, more contributions. So we've actually seen this cycle be very successful already, where many of our grantees become top contributors in the protocol, and then eventually get hired by a core dev team, become a core dev team themselves, or just dedicate themselves full time to a DAO, which we've seen recently, some people quitting their jobs in Web2 to join DAOs. What this self-sustaining ecosystem leads to is massive network participation growth. So we have over 165 indexers on the network, nearly 10,000 delegators. Really an incredible feat because delegators are non-technical. They often don't know how to code at all, and they really want to contribute to the graph. So that's incredible that they're aligned with the mission, even though they're not the ones running the nodes themselves. We also have over 350 subgraphs that have migrated. Also an incredible feat because this takes time. You know, we know these dApps are investing in their own products, their own roadmaps, um, but they're committed to, to decentralizing. Um, and that's why they're here on the network. I'm also really excited to share that the first liquid staking solution is launching uh, for the graph. Uh, Tenderize was a grantee last year. They will be the first to offer liquid staking GRT. This means that users that don't necessarily want to lock up for the thawing period for 28 days can do so by going through liquid staking um, and using the Tenderize platform. So really excited about this being the first. There are many more to come. And this one will start off with one indexer, but the goal is that all of these liquid staking providers um, enable a basket to make it uh, more equal for indexers. Moving on to core contributors, so I want to share more about each of the core developers and, and really how we got here today. So, you know, Edge and Node was the first team. They're really dedicated and leading, you know, a lot of the graph node efforts, experts um, in the protocol. Uh, protocol economics, research, and cryptography are the other areas Edge and Node's really um, adding value. 
And a year ago, we had a team called Streaming Fast join. Um, and Streaming Fast's expertise is in efficient streaming data. You might have heard of Firehose. Um, that component is really leveling up the graph and providing the indexing performance that our dApps need. We also had Figment join last year, also an incredible uh, titan in Web3. Their focus is mainly on multi-blockchain. Their expertise running nodes is you know, significant, um, and we've learned a lot from them already. Semiotic is, is really exciting because I think before Semiotic joined, it was a largely engineering-focused um, protocol core developer team, but semiotic joining solidified the cryptography research and, and what we know as the snark for us today, um, working with Edge and Node and various grantees. Um, and this really you know, closes the loop on us achieving the verifiability, um, verifiable indexing and querying that we've been talking about. The Guild. The Guild is a Web2 GraphQL team. Um, for those who aren't familiar, they've been veterans in GraphQL uh, for years, and they decided to dedicate themselves full-time to the graph. So really incredible to see teams not only in Web3, but Web2 realize the graph vision um, and understand that this is the best thing they could be doing with their work. I'm also really excited to share that we're actually adding a sixth core developer. And GraphOps will be joining the graph full time um, and receiving a $12 million grant as part of it. So let's give it up. For those of you that don't know, GraphOps has been contributing to the space for several years now. We're talking about Juan DeFago, who leads the subgraph development, Chris Wessels, a gigabrain and node infrastructure, Anna Petco. Um, this team is stacked, and we're so excited to have them full time contributing. They'll be focusing on protocol R&D, so anything around protocol econ, subgraph development, gossip network development for indexers, the indexer experience itself, so improving firehose support, um, indexer automation tooling, anything that really helps indexers do their job better. And lastly, continuing to provide ecosystem support. So this is indexer office hours, migration support, anything else that others need. I want to touch a bit on the graph roadmap and, and how it relates to decentralization. So, you know, we have five working groups, we have six teams now, and you'd think that all of them are kind of focused on their own, but they're not. Um, and that's what's really exciting is that this is a very multidisciplinary effort. And so each of these working groups ends up being almost its own little club, and each of them has several teams working on them. So, you know, Data and APIs has several teams, Indexer Experience, Snark Force, and it really goes to show that. The difference between a company and a protocol is that a company, the only people who care about what you're doing are the ones that are working for it, or the shareholders. In a protocol, anyone can care. And all you have to do is stand up. And so going back to that self-sustaining uh, ecosystem cycle, you know, most of these core devs that are uh, you know, here with us today started out as a grantee or just a very excited participant. Diving a little deeper on some of the highlights um, you know, on our decentralization journey, Really important to have indexing performance. This has been our number one task we've been focusing on for you know, over the last year, but I would say several years. Um, and working with the Firehose, um, as well as other exciting announcements that, that will be coming out soon, to make sure that dApps are getting that uptime and throughput that they need. The Guild is working on the graph client. So this is encapsulating all the subgraph features, everything to improve developer experience for subgraph developers. Then we have zero knowledge proofs verifiable indexing and querying, so really getting that verifiable data that we need as users and that we deserve. Um, and this one actually also touches on EIP 4444, 4444 uh, that will remove any requirements for Ethereum clients to hold historical data. And so it actually makes the graph the reliable solution um, to have verifiable data processed. Lastly, protocol upgrades, so anything from scaling, uh, improving the economics around curation, delegation, these are all really important. We want to get more people involved in the network. Um, creating intelligent indexer software, so anything to help indexers close their allocations, develop pricing models, basically be more efficient and provide the services they need, um, they need to provide to our dApps. And lastly, multi-chain. So we're working really hard to enable support for many different chains on the network. Currently, we support Ethereum, but every chain that's supported on the hosted service, and that's 34 chains, um, will be on the network soon, too. I wanted to highlight quickly our journey to migration as part of the decentralization story, because it's actually not only our journey. You know, these dApps are just a few of those that have decided to migrate on their own volition. 
You know, it takes only about 30 minutes to do it, but the impact is significant. And it shows that these dApps are committed to decentralization, not just for us, you know, the graph, but for their users and for themselves. And this enables these dApps to focus on what they're good at, which is front-end development, making good products, and they don't need to ever run their own server. I want to highlight a quick anecdote here. So I don't know if everyone remembers Constitution DAO. Did anybody participate? Yeah, so at its peak, the Juicebox API actually went down. So sad. Um, but it was centralized, so that happens. And so the Juicebox subgraph actually migrated to the network um, just in the nick of time, around the time of the auction, because their website kept going down. And so that's a beautiful story in how, you know, even in emergency situations, it's very easy and worthwhile to migrate your subgraph. Um, and, you know, the sub subgraph survived. Auction was great. We didn't win the Constitution, but still think it was a win. The last thing I want to touch on is education. So how do we make people go from zero to Web3? You know, we've got something like the Subgraph Developer Course. It's a certificate that the Graph Academy, an independent community organization, created to help people learn more about Subgraph development. We also have the GRTIQ podcast. Every Friday, an episode on what you need to know about Web3. This is probably the best place to learn about Web3, not only the Graph. And so we're really excited to continue supporting them. The Graftronauts community is also really exciting. You know, they've been around since, I think, the curator program, and their goal has always been, how do we get more non-technical people involved? How do we get delegators understanding the network? And so I would say, you know, the nearly 10,000 delegators that we have, I would attribute a lot of that success to this community. Lastly, I want to go over GraphScan, and you know, we've got so many indexers in our community that are dedicated not only to being good indexers, but providing services. So GraphScan, uh, Stake Machine, Ribena, P2P, all these indexers have been not only supportive on the network, but have actually created incredible tooling to educate new peas. So I'm really excited to have indexers and members in our community that not only are focused on their core competencies, but willing to improve our ecosystem as well. I'll leave it off with a few notes from the community on you know, what this decentralization has meant to them. You know, so we have Beanstalk here, and by decentralizing, by migrating their subgraph, they now get to focus on their core competencies, making really good products. We have folks like Tony over here who completed the certificate. Now he's hacking at GraphHack, and we hope to see more folks like this that can get their, start, their journey started um, from the subgraph DAO and the Graph Academy, and then becoming full-time employees at different teams. My favorite technology is the graph. So we see this a lot, that people use the graph as their entry point, that it's easier sometimes to learn about Web3 through a subgraph than it is learning solidity, and we want to encourage that. The graph is a gateway drug to full-stack development. It's a gateway for many things, and definitely a gateway for Web3 development, and we hope that as, as we have more subgraph features, we can encapsulate more of those use cases as well. I'm going to read this one out because this one's really great. I can always appreciate a decentralized protocol, but more importantly, the protocol saved me a bunch of time and resources instead of spending time on my own server. Who would want to do that? And lastly, I can't believe how easy it is to create a subgraph. You know, at the end of the day, this decentralization journey is all about supporting open source, permissionless data. That's really our mission, and the subgraph enables that. So I want to encourage everyone to continue learning more about subgraphs, teaching others, um, and testing it out yourselves. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed our decentralization journey so far, and please continue to join us on indexing all the world's data. Thank you.